Hi, geometry folks. I wanted to go back through some of what we did today, um, partly just because I want to take you a little further, mainly because I want to take you a little further with it, but also because second period, I think this particular fraction, I noticed when I was doing it third period, I thought, I think I just listened to something somebody called out and it didn't make any sense and I didn't notice that um, because I was kind of a little bit rushing. So it says find the probability that you choose a carb with an even number. Okay. Even number means 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. There's a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, and a 10 in every single suit. So that's 5 times 4. There are 20 even numbered cards in the whole deck. Plus, and for some reason I put 26. I don't know why. I think somebody was thinking even odd is half and half, or maybe I thought it, but I, I feel like I just somebody just blurted something and I just wrote it, which I apologize for. So this is what number three should actually look like. All right, moving down, we finished, we talked about number seven being um, without replacement, so that means they're dependent, so that's why the dependent part is all about this. The probability of drawing a male goldfish out of this tank with replacement, like just from, from the beginning, is six out of 10. That's the probability of getting a male. But if I take one out and haven't replaced it, that means I've changed that probability. So then I multiply, instead of just multiplying by the same thing, six out of 10, I have to multiply by that sort of adjusted probability. That adjusted probability, meaning a probability of getting a male now that I know a male has already been taken out, is the same thing as saying probability of getting a male given that a male has been taken out that's what this part is about. That's what this equation is about. So in this particular situation, we have a dependent situation. We said the probability of getting two males, a male and a male, is the probability of getting a male, just the straight, plain probability of getting a male, times the probability of giving a, getting a male given that we already know we got a male. We already took one out of the sample space. And this is another way of writing that. So this is not like a new part of the equation. This is just another way of writing probability of B given A, or probability of drawing a male given that I already took one out. Okay, so I just wanted to look, talk about that a little bit more specifically for number seven. Um, and number eight, this is where we stopped. Number eight and nine, when they just give you the probabilities, you really can't make any decisions about whether these things are independent or dependent or mutually exclusive or inclusive or any of that based on uh, know what you know about these items because you don't know anything about the items. So what you have to do to see here is that it says use the following information to determine if the events are independent. This is basically what they're asking you because notice back on our front page we said that if the events are independent this is true. So we're testing it. It's basically just a test. If this is true that the probability of one times the probability of the other gives me the probability of A and B, or both of them happening. If that's true, then yes, it's an independent events. So I'm testing it. So probability of A is 0.5 times probability of B is 0 0.7. 0 0.5 times 0 0.7 is that 0.35, which is what it needs to be for it to be independent? Yes. So that's a yes. I have a feeling since they gave us one yes, I bet number two, number nine is going to be a no. Probability of A, which is 0.3, times probability of B, which is 0.2, does that give me 0.5? No, it does not. It would give me 0.6. It would actually not even give me 0.6, it would give me 0.06. Okay, so that's a no. Because that equation this one I wrote in black here, because that does not hold true for these values, then automatically it is not an independent situation. All right, moving on. Next page. Not yellow. <coughs> this is something called a two-way table. A two-way table is basically just a chart that shows you numbers. It's a clear way of showing information about two different um, variables or two different characteristics. So the table below shows the results of a survey of 11th and 12th graders, and they were asked if they had a job. So the two ways is, was it an 11th grader or a 12th grader? Do they have a job or do they not have a job? So I've got two different things I'm deciding for each person. So this tells me 
out of all the students, we had 11th grade, uh, E for 11 and T for 12, I think. So we had uh, 18 11th graders who have a job, 22 11th graders who don't have a job. So all together, I can total this, and there were 40 11th graders polled. We have, <coughs> excuse me, 30 12th graders who do have a job, 10 12th graders who do not have a job. So total, again, 40 12th graders were polled. So we have a polled, or we surveyed a total of 80 people. Sorry that you can't see where I'm filling those in. So these have to add up to this, and these have to add up to this, and this has to add up to that. Same goes here. The total number of people who have a job, 11th graders is 18, seniors is 30, that's gonna be 48 people. Total number of people who do not have a job, 22 plus 10 is 32. That had better add up to 80, and it does. 48 total number of people who have a job plus the total number of people who don't have a job is 80 people. So remember that we have to figure out, we have to know whether intersection or union means and. So the probability of or or, probability of J intersect T. Well, intersect here means literally where these two things intersect, where this column intersects this row. Or you could think of it as the and, the probability of J and T being true. These are the people who, for whom J is true. These are the people for whom T is true. The intersection is right here. So that's 30 out of our total number of people, which is 80, or 3 eighths. Okay, probability of N union T. Remember, that's or. So the probability that someone has no job or is a 12th grader. So that includes people who are 12th graders but have a job, people who are 12th graders who don't have a job, and people who have no job are 12th graders, aren't 12th graders. If you have if the probability of no job, let's just write that out, probability of no job or 12th graders. That's what that says. Then if you are in either of those categories or in both, you count. Okay? So when it's written like a chart like this, we could just count. We could just say, well, 22 plus 10 plus the other 30. So that's going to be a total of 62. So we said that was 62 out of 80, right? Let's also do it with the equation to show why the equation works. This would be the probability of having no job plus, or means add, probability of being a 12th grader. But anytime we add, we have to take out the people who are both 12th graders with no job. Okay, so probability that we have no job. That means out of everybody, 32 people out of everybody have no job. Plus, probability you're a 12th grader. Out of everybody, 40 out of everybody is a 12th grader. Minus the people we just counted twice, those are the no job 12th graders, these 10 people. Minus 10 out of 80. 32 plus 40 is 72, and yes, we get 62, just like we would if we just added up those different boxes in our chart. <clears throat> Again, we have another or next, number 12, probability of being no job or an 11th grader. So go through the same process we did, hit pause on your video, go through the same process we just did for that one, and then check mine. Okay, so I'm getting five-eighths. This is the probability that this person has no job. Out of everybody, 32 have no job. Probability of being an 11th grader is 40 out of everybody, minus the 11th graders that don't have a job, because I just counted them in both categories. So minus 22 out of 80, and it gives me five-eighths. Next says we have an optional workshop to improve players' basketball skills. It was held for varsity players. After they went, we decided who improved and who did not improve. So first thing I want to do is go ahead and total my rows and my columns. So 44 plus 6 is 50, and so on. 
<clears throat> find the probability that a player chosen at random, chosen at random means out of 100, out of everybody. We're going to get tomorrow into chosen out of a particular group. But when we say chosen at random, we're saying out of everybody. So find the probability the players are chosen at random, attended the workshop, and showed improvement. And is, we could multiply or we could just look up here. It's the intersection, so probability of attended, intersect improvement. Okay, that's improved and attended, that's 44 people out of everybody. Okay, if we wanted to use the equation, then we would have to um, get a little bit more specific than we can at this point yet. So I would say just use the chart at this point because when we do that adjusted probability, we're going to talk more about how to use that tomorrow. Number 14, and I don't know, I want to make this a decimal because it's just so pretty as a fraction. 44 out of 100, 44 hundredths. You could also write that as what, um, 11 25ths? Yeah. Find the probability that a player chosen at random did not attend and, so did not attend, whoa, sorry, and showed improvement, six. So six out of 100 did not attend, but also showed improvement. So that's what, 3 50ths? Decimal or fraction is fine on these. Find the probability the player chosen at random attended the workshop or showed improvement. Okay, attended or showed improvement. That means I'm going to count everybody who attended. <coughs> Excuse me. And everybody who showed improvement. So 44 plus 6 is 50 plus 18 is 68. So I have 68 out of the total attended or showed improvement. Now if I did that with the equation, I would have said 62 plus 50 and then subtracted these 44 who did both. 62 is the probability of attending. 50, or well, 62 out of 100. 50 out of 100 is the probability of showing improvement, but then I've, sub I've chosen these people twice, so I'd have to subtract them once. I just counted though. If you were looking at it all divided up, you can just count. So that's what, 34 fiftieths, which is still reducible, so that's 17 twenty-fifths, or 0.68. Okay, so I hope that helps you do your homework, which is the next two pages after this. If you've been numbering your packet, which I didn't hear, but I did on another one, let's see, one, two, three, it's pages four and five. See you tomorrow. <laughs>